at the mat at the same time. The biggest thing with the underhook is that you need to pull yourself nice and tight because when she starts going crazy, it's slippery. The only thing I'm gonna have to hold on really is the underhook. I keep it pinned to my chest and whatever she does is whatever she does. If I can get her to stay down, that would be ideal, right? But she's probably gonna try to turn. So you always have to be ready to go into the front hand touch. Right, the goal is the pin, right? But if I have to, I'm ready to go front headlock, right? Spin to the back, or I can try to finish. Right, so if you're a little bit more high level, you guys can practice any of those situations, right? But if you're pretty new, you're gonna kind of push and pull at the same time. Right? I'm trying to clear the hook with my hand and my leg at the same time. Heel to toe, and I'm trying to bring her knee to her armpit. If she touches, I know for sure I'm gonna get an underhook. Even if she keeps it closed, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get an underhook. Dig, slap the mat, everything's nice and tight. One more time. Easy peasy. Go. All right, so if I fall into this, just keep your arm right here, right? This is going to be him getting back to guard somehow. So I just had to treat it the same way as if he posted on my chest or my neck. I push up and go around, right? You can speak to the arm bar or like Troy calls it like the black hole, I think, right? And he goes straight all the way around to like a reverse triangle, it's really cool. Right, but if I'm falling on this frame, and I'm just getting used to falling on this frame, you're getting used to falling on their defense. So if you're here, right, we should have backed up and pushed the wrists out of the way. And just getting really good at this is gonna be super helpful. This has to be really tight, right? All of like the little things are the most important, right? If you're just here, it's a lot different than pulling and keeping everything tight. Every single time I make my underhook, I'm thinking that this is the last time I'm ever gonna get an underhook in my entire life. I have to stay attached to this and hold it super, super tight. If you play half guard, that underhook, it's the same thing. Right, when I'm trying to ratchet their hips, like I'm uh, trying to do coyote half guard or trying to pull, it's the same thing, pulling him here. I'm attached to him the whole time. I have to have that attachment because that's the only thing that's gonna kind of keep me safe when everything goes sour because it's super slippery, right? That's why I like the knee cut underhook so much because it doesn't matter if I'm out here. We're super slippery, it doesn't matter. I'm holding him, I'm attaching him and no matter where he's going, I'm ready to go and I can attack right off of it. So not only is it a pinning mechanic, but it's an attacking mechanic as well. So if it's the first couple of minutes in your ACC match, you can attack. If it's the latter part, you can pass. Does that make sense? So we're just gonna start from the butterfly hooks, right? If you're good enough at the knee cut, you can just shoot it from here. If you miss, just get ready to wrestle. And what I mean by get ready to wrestle is don't forget to sprawl. It's a shot. They're gonna try to pick up a single leg or switch to a double leg. So you have to sprawl, get their head and arms on the mat so you can clear your leg to spin or clear your leg to attack the neck. Either or, you still have to get your leg back. If Sooner gets my ankle, he's gonna pull it in, right? And a lot of times we kind of forget this. We get a little too excited, right? Where I do clear, I don't sprawl, I spin, and then he grabs again. Right, these are all things that we need to be thinking about. If his head and his hands are on the floor, it's very hard for him to have his hands on me. Does that make sense? Cool, let's go. Now, partner alive.
all about the grind, the screen. You try to make it through. Big deep breath, as you move, you're in the That's what's up, huh? Ocean, baby, in the deep water. <laughs> Welcome to the deep end.
Champ is here. Let's go. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> that was like seven in a row. <laughs> Yeah. 
lives it out with no fear. Yes, commentary and all. chunk in there. It's actually sliced their bicep. Now, what you doing what I like to call the Jesse defense. And I figured it, I figured out how to get this away. But I have to come up to a Kimura position and start to go for a north-south choke. But instead today, I'm just gonna go all the way over like this. If I can. Finishing with no hook, coming out soon. DJ J. Fanatic, he's on full display here in Mount Vernon, Illinois. I can't even finish her, she's so tough, y'all. And I'm just being nice. There it is, taking the back. I'll sell. DJ J. Fanatic. Oh my god. <laughs>
and favorites are tap away with the Stoplet Sack. Time to hop on to 85% more time. Who needs that much more time? Well, when giving your money out the bath, turn what we give you a bite shower. Yikes, you got much more time. When the wine tasting becomes a wine spilling.
So, I'm, hey, my name is Alejandro Viner. I smoke crack every day. <laughs> I'm putting that in there. Oh, is it on right now? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, I've just been busy. Like, Pix and I have just been slammed. Tad, we've just been slammed with this wrestling. We've literally dedicated our lives to making these uh, kids really do something with this wrestling. I mean, ages five all the way up to 18. I mean, literally, we're every week in a different wrestling tournament, every week in a different camp, getting these kids ready. And uh, it's really starting to pay off. We're seeing like huge jumps in our kids wrestling. We take them to these tournaments and like other coaches and other teams are like, whoa, like who are these kids? What's going on? Because really the majority of them are homegrown from Mount Vernon, which is really neat. And then we're getting all these other kids from other areas that are starting to tap in, you know, Southern Illinois. Uh, Illinois in itself is like a super like big wrestling state, but Southern Illinois isn't like super big and it's starting to get a good name for itself. So a lot of people are starting to tap into this PSF wrestling thing and like buy into it. So it's been a lot of fun and we're having a lot of good time with that. And this training is just bringing here downstairs, and the jiu jitsu is just crazy, man. And our wrestling is getting better, and our jiu jitsu is getting better, having to coach and learn and stay active for our kids so that they're staying sharp. And uh, it's been nuts, man. Um, what I have next for myself is uh, I have, I'm getting an MRI tomorrow for my wrist. So. I got wrist locked real bad at pans, did tap, got out. So I have an MRI I'm getting done uh, tomorrow. Once I figure out what's going on with that, then I'm gonna figure out what tournaments I'm gonna do next. Right now, I think the next thing for me on paper is probably Masters Worlds and the Jiu Jitsu Con. Uh, but once I figure out, like get my results, and I figure out if surgery is gonna be a, ha have to be a thing or not, then I'll have more of an idea. But right now, I'm shooting for Jiu Jitsu Con and Masters Worlds. It's gonna be my first Masters Worlds, hitting at uh, in August. August 2nd, I'll be at 30 years old, so I'm really excited. The Jiu-Jitsu Con and the Masters Worlds is by far the best IBJF tournament in the world and all year, so I can't wait for that. Outside of that, you know, just doing the same thing we always do, train hard as fuck and have the best time we can with our best friends. Uh, Martin Aitamaki, I'm from Sweden. And... How long are you staying? Um, I'll have for four weeks, yeah, just about. So, yeah, I got there on the 7th of June, and then I'll be here until the like, 5th or 6th of uh, July. So. And what made you want to come out and train here? Uh, just like everybody else, it was the, uh, the, the videos online on YouTube. So during uh, COVID, I started watching you guys on Flow, and then I thought about coming out here um, last year. But uh, I didn't, and then I saw Couch uh, post about the, uh, the, the, the tour that they were doing in the UK. Um, so I ended up flying out to Wales. I was there for three days, and then uh, yeah, I got to hang out with the guys there. So uh, that motivated me to actually come out here and uh, try the real thing. So. How long have you been training jujitsu? Um, four years, just about. Maybe a bit more. So I started. In 2019, and then COVID hit, we couldn't train at all. I didn't have any training partners, so it wasn't until the lockdown sort of um, stopped, and then yeah, I got back into it. Uh, so yeah, four years. And uh, where are you staying here? Like, how would you describe the living space that you're staying? In? The so I'm staying at what you guys call the, the barracks. <laughs> And it's uh, allegedly an, an old DMV, as I understand it. We found some papers in there of people actually coming in and leaving their like license papers to, to pick that up or whatever. Um, but yeah, we're cleaning it up a bit. As I understood it, Heath and them just got the papers sorted. So like, I'm, I'm one of the sort of first guys to be there now that we're starting to fix it up. So um, and I, I, I like it. Like I've been in the military for a while. I'm used to just like sticking on top of each other. So uh, I don't mind. And then, uh, I get to come here twice a day at least and do a lot of training. So like, I'm occupied, that's good. What do you think of the training so far? It's rough. Um, it's so like the I've noticed the thing that makes it feel like all of the guys here are super quick uh, and fast with everything is just, uh, people here drill a lot. Um, so they just get used to they know what grips they're going for and they're really quick to get the position that they want. 
and then you have like four minute rounds, maybe 25 seconds rest, and then it's really humid uh, and really hot. So uh, and people are super good. So yeah, uh, I like it. I like having just tough rounds every single round, uh, just testing myself. So, yeah. Hey guys, uh, it's CJ. Um, just been working really hard, trying to uh, just get ready for these ADCC Opens and get ready for the East Coast. And hopefully just the East Coast, but the East Coast and maybe the West Coast trials. But uh, hopefully we'll have to do it with the East Coast. Um, but just doing some Opens, uh, trying to train as much as possible. We uh, started a kids program not too long ago, and then we just attracted a couple of full-time kids. So we've been really, really focusing on trying to uh, help build those kids up. They're going to be doing the Dallas Open with us, so I'm really excited. Uh, just put my time between the kids program and my... My, uh, my own jiu-jitsu as well so yeah just training a lot and helping out when I can